Hi there, welcome back. Uh, this video is a little bit more discombobulated than normal, and there's a reason for that. I want to go back and look at the same linear regression problem we did last time. I want you to begin thinking of curve fitting really as optimization problems, finding the minimum of a function. And so we're going to go back to linear regression and that linear regression error formula. And the first thing we're going to do is visualize that, just plot out the function. Um, it's a function of two variables, so we're going to plot that out and look at, take a look at what it looks like and get an idea intuitively uh, as to how curve fitting works. Uh, secondly, again, I want to think of this as a minimization problem, and since the linear regression mathematics is easy, we're just going to work out that formula by hand uh, just from basic calculus and solve for the, for, for the minimum of that function. And then just because we can, since we're going to have the formula and we have the raw data from the last video, uh, we'll just plug that into Excel and make sure that it agrees with Python. So with that being said, let's get started. So I want to visualize what this function looks like. And to do that, I'm just going to use MATLAB just because I'm more familiar with the plotting routines in there than I am uh, in Python. Now recall, this is a function of two variables. Here's the, uh, here's the actual equation. It's a function of m and b. And this whole thing gets squared. So this is some sort of parabolic bowl-shaped function. So that's what we would expect to see. Now I've already written a function called plot parameters. And there we go. This is what we get. So you can see it is indeed a bowl shape. And let me see if we just rotate this around. You can see it's a function that has only one minimum in there. So we want to find where that minimum is. That's the, uh, that's the uh, value uh, that gives us our best fit parameters. So I actually had MATLAB uh, print out this, um, these minimum values here. Now this was calculated just via a uh, built-in nonlinear minimization routine in MATLAB. And you can see that the, the exact same numbers that we get out of the uh, Python code. Now this is obviously overkill because it's a linear problem. We don't need to do anything particularly fancy to solve it. However, uh, as kind of a spoiler as to where we're going to go in future, um, future videos, uh, we'll, we'll, we will use a more sophisticated um, minimization routines to actually find the minimum and hence find the value of these parameters. Okay, so that was pretty straightforward. Um, and the nice thing about the linear problem is that we can actually work out a, an equation uh, by hand for what the minimum of the function is. So let's go do that. So here's our error function, and I've written it explicitly as a function of m and b. So two variables. And note that this quantity is squared. So we have these squared variables. We should expect some sort of parabolic shape. And so we want to find the values of m and b that minimize this function. So going back to calc 1, uh, you do that just by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. Now we have a two-dimensional function, so we have to differentiate uh, with respect to both m and b. So we're going to have two equations that are going to be set equal to zero. So here are the derivatives. Um, all things considered, they're pretty straightforward. And we set it equal to zero. And then now we just have two equations, two unknowns, and the rest is just algebra. Famous last words, right? It's just algebra. Anyway, we can divide out that 2 since it's common to both equations and distribute through the uh, minus signs. And then we, then we can collect all the known terms and move them to the right-hand side. That is, anything that, that, that doesn't have an M and a B in it. Now, how you want to solve this from here is more or less up to you. You could easily recast this as a matrix equation and just invert the matrix to, to get the solution. Or you could do more of the high school algebra type thing and solve uh, for one of the variables and plug it into the other equation and get get the answer that way. Uh, so that's what I'm actually going to do. Now I'm going to solve this bottom equation here for b. Now I'm going to kind of, I guess, distribute through the summation signs. So I want to explicitly show all the terms that we are summing over. Now notice here in this bottom equation we have this term sum over b. So we're adding up b n times. So we could just replace that with the quantity n times b and get rid of the summation there. Likewise, uh, in both the first and second equations, you have the sum, sum, over n, sum over 1 to n, m times x. That m is a constant, and it's not being summed over, so we could pull that out of the summation as well. And now from here, it's just easy to solve that bottom equation for b. You just move the term involving the sum of x over to the right-hand side, and then just divide through by the constant n. And here we are. I have uh, rearranged the bottom equation uh, to solve for b. And to get our value for m, we just put, plug this equation for b into the top equation and just do, do the algebra. And here we are. Here's the equation for m. And now if we need the value for b, we could just plug this back into that previous equation and get an expression that gives us b. 
And now that we have a formula and we have the data from last time, let's just plug this into Excel and see what we get. This is definitely one of those just because you, you can type of things. Uh, it's not something you're, you're going to do since Excel already has built in, um, built in functions, but it's good just, just to do once and see how, things, see how things work. So let's go do that. So here I've opened Excel and I've already imported the uh, data from the last video, the linear regression data. These are the percent changes of SPX and Apple. And these are going to be our X and Y values in that equation for M. So here we go. Here's our equation for M. This is going to be the PDF that I'm going to put up. I just need to clean it up a lot and, and, and finalize it. But so SPX is going to be our X values. Uh, the Apple percent change is going to be our Y values. So we're going to need a column for the product of x and y and a column for x squared. So let's put those into our spreadsheet now. So back to Excel here. Let us make a column uh, and we'll call it just uh, x times y and we'll make a column called x squared. And then obviously this is going to be equal to um, what a2 times b2 and this will be equal to a2 squared. Uh, how about, how about, where's the carrot on here? Squared. Good, so we got that. And we'll just fill in these fields. Done. On to the next part. And so we now need to sum up this x times y column. So we're just going to label this column sum of x, y. And it's the sum of the, all the elements of the d column. So it's going to be equal to sum d2 to d1259. There we go there. Now we're going to need the sum of the x values times the sum of the y values. So let's just call this sum x times sum y. And this is going to be equal to sum of the a column. So it's a two to a twelve fifty nine and it's gonna be times uh sum b two to b twelve fifty nine and we're done there and likewise for the sum of the x squared let's just call this sum x squared it's gonna be the summation of the uh, of column e so this is equal to sum E2 to E1259. Done. And the last thing we're going to need is the sum of uh, the X values. Uh, and we're going to need to square all of that. So this is going to be equal to the uh, summation of A2 to A1259. And now we need to just square that whole thing. So good, there we are. And now we'll just make a column for our slope. We'll just call it slope equals, and then we'll put the value here. And here we are. We get this number here. Uh, it's exactly the same as what we, uh, we got out of Python. Uh, not terribly surprising. I should probably note that I um, never made a comment on it, but I put the number of data points here, uh, here in column and uh, in the field N1. So that's uh, a number that we need to actually do this uh, calculation here. But yeah, same as Python, uh, not terribly surprising, but that's how you would actually implement a linear, regress linear regression from the formula itself. Well, so there we are. Uh, that was a bit all over the place, but again, I just wanted to get you grounded in the idea of thinking of this as a minimization problem. Uh, for next time, I haven't decided exactly uh, what we're going to do, so if you have any suggestions, um, Leave, leave the comments below. But uh, the two ideas I had was to look at some data I had back from my PhD days that required a fairly complicated nonlinear fit. Uh, we'll simplify it a little bit uh, uh, for the purpose of, of coding it up. Or the other idea was actually to try to m uh, create a simple model of a battery that's discharging and then relaxing. Uh, so we will actually fit a differential equation to a, a bunch of uh, experimentally d um, obtain data 
and try to get uh, an equivalent circuit model of a battery. So we'll try to pull out capacitances and resistance values from that. Um, each one has its pros and cons. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which one I'm going to do yet. Uh, but um, yeah, if you guys have any preferences, please let me know and I will talk to you later.